In this video, I want to talk about another powerful AppVare feature, the AppVare Build Cache. The Build Cache allows you to preserve the contents of selected files and folders between project builds. That's important because every time an AppVare build runs, it's actually running a new instance of the AppVare build agent. What that means is that any files and folders that were created as part of the build, for instance, uh, downloading of NuGet packages or downloading of chocolate packages or uh, downloading of Ruby gems, all of those things that are coming from those external dependencies are not persisted between project builds. So they have to happen each and every time. So the ability of uh, build cache persisting those files between project builds is important because it means that our uh, builds can happen quicker. You're not having to go to those external dependency uh, places to download those things each and every time. Instead, you're restoring it from a much closer uh, build cache within the AppVare environment. That also means that your builds are a little bit more resilient because you're no longer dependent on those external websites. So if NuGet goes down or uh, Ruby Gems can't be uh, restored for some reason, if you've, you're restoring them from the build cache, it means that you're one uh, step closer to um, a, a, a reproducible, um, resilient build. So the AppVare documentation has quite extensive uh, information about how to set up and run this build cache. But what I want to show you is how I use that in the builds that I run on AppVare. So I typically use uh, Cake, uh, build automation tool to run all my builds on AppVare. So what I'm going to show you is how I cache the dependencies that Cake has and how I can also invalidate the cache uh, when I need to. So what, why that's important is if I uh, want to upgrade the version of Cake that I'm using or I want to upgrade some of the other dependencies that I've got as part of my build, I actually need to uh, invalidate the cache that AppVare has because uh, they're no longer valid. I want them to be, I want them to be update, updated. So uh, AppVare provides a mechanism to trigger uh, the invalidation of that cache. So let's get started. I'm going to uh, run the build locally on my machine here. Uh, and what we'll see happening over on the right, left hand side here is that the dependencies of Cake have been uh, downloaded and placed into this tools folder. So in here we'll see all the uh, assemblies and EXEs that are required uh, to execute Cake. And we'll see that in the build output that we've got all of these downloading and installing commands. If I run the build again locally, we're not going to see those downloading uh, uh, commands in the output because it, they're already restored. So if I go to AppVare, where I've got my build running over here, we'll see those same outputs. It's downloaded all of the dependencies and it's placed them into the tools folder. But at the bottom of our uh, build script here, we'll see that this on line 30, we've actually added the tools folder to the build cache and the build succeeded successfully. So if I run this build again now, what we'll see is that rather than downloading those external dependencies again, it's going to restore them from the build cache instead. And we'll see that in the uh, output of the build uh, when it runs. So the build started and what's happened is that it's restored that tools folder from the cache and placed it onto the new instance of the AppVare build machine. So as a result, my build has gotten that bit quicker. Now, now let's say that I want to modify the build process and I want to change one of those dependencies and I want to invalidate that cache folder. So what I can do here is if I go over to this, uh, up th this file here and make a change and check that in, what we'll see is that rather than restoring the, the cache from its location, Instead, it's going to invalidate that cache and re-download all of those external dependencies. So let's see that happening here as uh, this build carries on as well. Here's the build starting. So what we'll see here is it's invalidated as some dependencies, i.e. the packages.config file, had changed. And as a result, it's executing the build script that was there before, and then it's reapplying that new files and folders into that tools folder in the build cache. And again, if I run the build just one more time to emphasize the point, I will see not 
the invalidation of the cache, we'll see that because nothing's changed, it'll just restore that cache folder back into its location. Here we go, build starting again, cache folders being uh, restored, and then the build executes as it normally was. So how that works is if I go over to my appver.yaml file, this is the important section down here. It's this uh, lines 20 and 21. So here we're saying, cache, I want you to take the relative path to the tools folder and add everything in that uh, tools folder at the end of the build into the build cache. And what we've got here at the other side are the files that if they change, that will invalidate that tools folder and have it uh, uh, have, have it deleted. So what I've said here is again, using relative paths is that if my build.cake file changes or the tools package.config file changes, go ahead and invalidate that cache and uh, put it back into the cache once the build has succeeded again. So this is a really, really powerful uh, feature and it's one that not all CI systems has. Uh, AppVayer and Travis are the ones that spring to mind that have this uh, functionality and it can be really useful for making uh, a resilient uh, and quick build. The one thing that I would say is missing is that if you wanted to invalidate that cache without making a modification to any files, then that option isn't currently here. The AppVayer team know about this uh, feature request and it hopefully will be coming down the pipeline at some point. What you can do though, uh, AppVayer has a very extensive uh, API, a REST-based API, which allows you to uh, alter things within the build. And one of those, if we jump down to the documentation here, is to delete the project cache. So what you can do though, is if you've got something like uh, Postman, you can actually emit a delete request to purge that cache uh, at any time. So all, what all I've done here is I've sent that uh, delete command or that delete uh, HTTP post. And if I run the build again now, what we'll see is rather than the cache being restored, it will uh, just run the build normally without doing that uh, res re restoration of the cache. So let's just wait for to see that happening. So notice previously we would have seen uh, the cache being restored output. That's not happening. It's downloading all the dependencies and then the cache is being updated. So it's a little bit of a shame that at the minute you can't invalidate that cache from the AppVair UI, but because of the REST-based API that does exist, you do still have that functionality and you, and you, and you can do that uh, when, if and when required. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been useful.